Hi and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to construct this cover page in Canva from scratch for free without using any of the pro features. And I'm also going to be showing you how you can customize one of their own templates. So let's go to the Canva homepage and on the homepage, let's go to create a design and then type in at the top a4 portrait and then you can see at the top here we've got document a4 portrait now of course you can do this any size you like but for a document cover page you're looking at probably an a4 page so once all that opens we've got a number of features on the side here that we can use and if we go to elements we can begin to insert some graphics so go to elements over here and then across the top here we can search for photos or sometimes they will appear in this menu here. So here they are here and go to see all. Then you need to type in at the top the type of photos that you're looking for it can be anything you like, but I've picked this image here, which just is an architectural image. I'm going to select that one and I just click on it and it will be inserted to your page. Once it's inserted, we can resize it by just using the corner circles and then we can also move it by clicking and dragging. So all we want to do is just stretch it out across the page. I don't want to use up that much of the page for the image, so I'm just going to move it up. Now we're going to insert a square. So go back to elements, go to shapes, click on see all. Then you can just click on the shape you want and it will appear in your document. Again, we're going to resize it to stretch across our canvas. There we go. And so that we can create some cohesion, if you select your square, go up to color, because we have this image already inserted, Canva will take a swatch or a color palette from that image and insert it here. As you can see, it says photo colors. So we can use all of these colors here for the rest of our cover page to create that level of cohesion. It all ties together nicely. So I'm going to select this dark color here for the background so that when our writing appears on it, it will pop if it's white. And then before I do all the graphics at the top here, I'm going to select and put in all of the text. So go to text and just select add heading and just click. And you can see here that it will just place this sample text in your canvas. It's all selected here. So you just go ahead and type. Now to customize the text, just select the box. If your cursor is inside, so if I click again, you can see my cursor is flashing. If I then try to do any kind of customization with the font or the color, it won't do it. You have to deselect it, reselect it so that your cursor is no longer inside the box. Then you can go up to your fonts and you can select a font of your choice. I'm going to go to Helivector World and then I'm just going to change this to 60 points at the top here for the size. And then if you grab this icon here, the cross arrow, click and drag, you can move this around. Sometimes when you click on it and move it around, it does. Other times you click on it, it will put the cursor inside it and then you can't move it. So that's the only two things that can be slightly clunky when it comes to Canva. Now that I've customized this box, I'm just going to use this duplicate icon here and create another one. And I'm going to do that another two times because we're going to put some additional text in here then another time for some text at the bottom and then i'm just going to move this one over here so select this one i'm going to move this up a little bit and then put my cursor inside or click and it will select all or press command or control a then put in further text okay so all of this text here is slightly too big so I'm going to select this box here. Now, if I try and click and drag, it's going to move this background, which can be a bit irritating. So if you select the box and want to select other additional boxes, hold down the shift key and then click on them and it will select all of them. And then you can customize them together. So I want to reduce the size of the font. So select them all, go up to the font size here and I'm going to type in 50 and press enter. And I want all of the text over to the left hand side of my box. As you can see, this one's in the middle. So go up to the alignment box here, click, and you can see now they're all moved over to the edge of the box. So now I want them all aligned here along this line. So go to position 
and go over to this icon here. This You can see it's aligned to left. So click on that and then it will align it perfectly. And then you can just simply move the whole lot together to exactly where you want it. Now I'll come back at the end and move this because it's always not in the right place until the very end. So just to show you some further customizations on this text here, I'm going to select it. I'm firstly going to change the color. So go to text color and I'm going to select another color from the color palette here. Select this one here. And I'm also going to go up to spacing here and I'm going to increase the letter spacing. So I'm just going to pull this slider over to the right. And as you can see, that word extends a little bit just to add a little bit more interest. I can move all these boxes up a little bit so that they're a little bit closer. Now, if they don't look like they're evenly spaced, once again, select them holding down the shift key, go to position. Here it says space evenly, click vertically. That will evenly space them out. And then once again, we need to align them. There we go. If you're happy with all their alignment, you can group them together, which means they become one group and you can continue to move them around as one element. You can simply ungroup them by clicking on it and selecting ungroup. So now to the text down here, I'm just going to paste this in. There we go. You can see it's too big. So I'm going to stretch this out. There we go. And then you can reduce the font size another way, which is to grab the corner again, once it's all lined up in your box, grab the corner and just reduce the size of the text there. And as you do so at the top here, the font size will change. So I want this to font size 15 and just move that over there. And then because my cursor is inside, I want to duplicate this. So take it out, click back on, duplicate it. There we go. And I'm going to move this font over to the right. So select it and just click on this icon until it moves over to the right. Just keep clicking and it will eventually move. I'm going to select both of these, holding down that shift key and clicking on both of them. Go to position. Now, if you want to align it to the right as I do and it's grayed out, that's because it's already lined up. So you don't have to do anything. Then just select group. And then once again, you can move it around anywhere. Now, as you move it around, you can see all of these pink lines appear. And that's because it's lining up with certain elements of your image. So if I move it over to the right, you can see this frame that appears. And that gives you a pretty good idea about where you should be placing it just to make it visually more pleasing. So I'm going to move that down to the bottom there. And then when I move this one over here, you can see the box will appear again. And then if I do it with 2024, once again, I've moved it over to the edge of that frame box. Okay, I'm going to steal another box here. So select it, duplicate it, move it down to the bottom. And then I'm going to select the box, select the text, Command or Control A. I'm going to go back up here and increase that to 25 and just move it down below that text. Now, once I'm happy, I'm going to select both of these boxes again by holding down that shift key. I'm going to make sure that going up to position, it's all aligned to the left, which it is. Then I'm going to group it. Then without deselecting it, I'm going to go over to this box here and press my shift key down and select that one. Then going back up to position, I want them both aligned to the bottom. So they're both perfectly lined. Then I'm going to group both of those. Now for this text here, I just want to go to the font and reduce it. So select this drop down here and I'm actually going to select regular and I might use the spacing one more time and space out those letters just a little bit more. Perfect. And then just move that back to the side of the alignment frame. And then I'm going to put a small line in here. So go to elements click on the line, move the line down. Then if I want to ensure this stays perfectly horizontal, just hold down the shift key, click and drag one of the balls out to the right. There we go. Make sure it's all lined up. If we move it, you'll see how it lines up with the text below there. Now to the graphics. I've left this to last because it's a little bit more complicated. 
So again, once we're on shapes, go down to the triangle. And once again, once it's selected, go to the color and you need to select one of the darker colors and one of the lighter colors. So we'll select this color here, rotate it round and go to a perfect 90 degrees. And then we can move that up here and then you can see the duplicate icon is not highlighted. So deselect the box, reselect it. It appears there. We're going to duplicate this four times. So let's just move all of these out. This one we're going to rotate again to 90 degrees. Move it so it's perfectly aligned with this triangle here. Go to shape and create a lighter shade and then let's just zoom in. Use this slider at the bottom and just zoom in and deselect that triangle just making sure they're perfectly lined up. We can move this triangle to here and this triangle here will rotate it to 90 degrees once again. We'll change the color, move it over here and then we'll duplicate it one more time and then create the darker shade, rotate it all the way around to 90 degrees again and we can move it down to here. And let's deselect everything. So we'll create another box. Let's just take this one over here and then we'll rotate it round and this time we're going to have to line it up perfectly with the angle of these triangles. So we're going to zoom in. I'm just going to click and drag and move that canvas up. And as you can see, we're trying to line that purple line up with the edge of that triangle. Deselect it. There you go. It's perfectly lined up. Now we're going to reduce the transparency of this particular rectangle. So go to this element here. In fact, let's make sure that we've selected the right element. Go to this transparency slider here and just move that down so we can see that image coming through and then deselect it. And as you can see, as we zoom out, we've just got this area here. You don't have to do this, but I want to put a shape at the back here to match the background. So you can use a number of shapes, but let's choose another square and let's move that. In fact, firstly, let's change the color. Let's go to color and change it to that darker color. And let's slightly change the shape. Let's rotate it round. So now that's all lined up, we can now put in a logo and your company name. So I haven't got one at the moment, so I'm just going to steal some text from down here. So select this one here and group, and then I'm going to deselect it, reselect this one, duplicate and move it up here, and then move everything over to the left. Let's just select it all. These two lines are a bit too far apart. So again, I can go to spacing and this time line spacing and I can reduce the spacing between those two words to about there and then deselect it, reselect it and move it. Just reduce the size of it a bit. And then to insert the logo, go to uploads and here is where you can upload your own images and logos. All you need to do is simply go to upload file, go to your files, choose the one you want and simply click upload and then it will simply upload here into Canva. So once it's uploaded, simply click on it and it will upload it into your canvas. And then all I have to do is resize it to fit my text. You can group them together, holding down the shift key, select group. And then of course, now you can move them anywhere you like. Let's just zoom out. Perfect. Once you're finished and you're happy with it, Canva will save this into your personal creations and you can find that on the home page. So all of my creations, you can see it saved it here. I haven't actually saved it. It does it automatically for you. So it's always accessible. Or if you want to download it, simply go to share, go down to download. And here you can select from a number of files. Once you've selected your file, just simply click download and it will go into your downloads file. Okay, so if you wanted to use one of Canva's templates, simply go to the home tab, 
go to create design at the top here you can select cover page and then again you can select landscape or portrait if it doesn't have portrait here all you need to do is type it in essay cover page proposal you can literally select from any of these i'll go for business plan and once uploaded over here on the left hand side you can select from these everything with a crown is for the pro version you will have to pay for that or you can select from anything without a crown so let's say for example you wanted to select this one here and clearly you want to make your own adjustments so this is simply made up of shapes images and text there's nothing too complicated about it so if I just click on the image and then move it you can see I've actually clicked on this frame that they've used now if you want to change the color when you select anything go up to the top and you can see what elements of that you can change so here it's a border color click on it and then you have a variety of different options it's obviously taking the color palette from the image behind so you could tie that in and select a darker color which I've done now it's very difficult to see but there is a difference in color here again with the shapes you can select the shapes and if I move those shapes you can see that's just a collection of shapes but again at the top you can see we've got colors up here so I can select on the darker green and select a different color and just keep going along changing those colors to either brand colors or image photo colors completely up to you again with business plan this is simply just text so select it you can change the font or the font size as we've done before and you can also change the color palette as well If you click on the background and the image doesn't move, double click on it and it will be released like a frame. Sometimes it has to be detached from its frame for you to be able to move it, access it or change it. So we can move the image if you want to. If not, you can simply press the delete key and it will delete it. Then you can go to elements. You can scroll down to photos and click see all. Let's see we wanted, say wanted to use the photo from before we can use that and then pop that in there then you can affect the transparency here and then just reduce the transparency of that image and because it's in front of all of our graphics you can see they've really faded so we need to send this image to the back so go to position and select to back I think that the transparency is still a bit, little bit high and then we can reselect this frame and then move that back across. So as you can see, all of the templates in Canva are just made up of assets and it's just about learning how to utilize those assets, how to change them, how to change the color, how to resize them and how to unclip them from any frames that they might be in. Once again, you can go up to share and then go to download again, select the file of your choice and then simply click download. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.